Welcome to the Weekend Live Show. By the way, we run down the biggest stories of the week with you every Saturday night. By the way, is where I'm from. Let us know in the comments right now. By the way, where you is where I'm from. By the way, is where I'm from. Marshfield, New Bedford, Brockton, Malden, Tucsonville, Manchester, Albuquerque, in the Hampton, Hubbard Square, Quincy, Hudson, Dow Garden, the Hampton, Howie, New Hampshire, Garden City, Agawam, Mount Poison, Plymouth, Pittsburgh, Lake City, Los Angeles. We're too this year, cause we're ruthless. Yeah, that's some true shit. You don't wanna mess with Cheddar in this country that you can't do. You have a job? What do you do? Hey, Stephanie. By the way, where I'm from. By the way, is where I'm from. You lived, I'd come to your house, I'd sit outside, roast marshmallows right in your fucking yard. See, I fell up in the house, you called that. Alright, let's get this party started, shall we? Yo, what's up, Turtle Riders? How's everyone doing tonight? Good, good, excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to the live show, ladies and gentlemen. We are back here on the YouTube channel. It's been a minute since we've been on here. If you missed it, we were suspended for about a week or so because of an old video from like three years ago that got a strike on it over some bullshit. I don't even know who's reporting it. Like it's really old. So whatever. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, guys, and right now, and I am going to share. Uh, the Rumble stream, for those of you who haven't gone over to Rumble, we're going to be leaving YouTube real soon. I'm getting real, real sick of the censorship, but we got to build up our sub count over on Rumble. Rumble is basically the same thing as, as YouTube now, except it's free. You can just say what you want there and it's cool. You don't get like week offs because of three old video, three year old videos, like none of that shit. Like they just let you talk. It's a novel concept. And you can just kind of do whatever you want. Um, but yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead right now. I've just plugged that into the comments. So go and subscribe to Rumble because while we were gone for a week, we did a bunch of streams on Rumble. And we actually had pretty big audience over there. And we only have like 1,100 subs. So go create a uh, whatever a user account over there. Hit the subscribe button. And yeah, we're streaming on there right now. I'll try to read both comments tonight. We got uh, 20 over there. We got 13 Kings. Says, what's up, Turtle Riders? What's going on, 13 Kings? Uh, so, cool. All right. So, yeah, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new here, could do me a favor. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button because we do this every Tuesday and Thursday night at 9 p.m. Unless there's some sort of sport ball match on, a playoff game, whatever, that conflicts with. But we do it every Tuesday and Thursday. Other than that, at uh, Tuesday and Saturday, I apologize, at 9 p.m p.m. sharp so get on there uh if you like us and you want to support what we do here at turtle boy daily news you can join turtle club is the best way to do that link below you can join for only 15 dollars a month you get access to the ad free on the website none of those annoying hot asian girls in your neighborhood sorry gentlemen uh, but uh you'll just have to deal without them maybe go have sex with your girlfriend or something instead i don't know uh but yeah, you won't get any of those annoying pop-up ads. You'll also get uh, access, to, access to the Thursday night stream at 9.30 that nobody else gets, premium content, and you get a free T-shirt of your choice. So go ahead and, you know, by doing that, the, the primary purpose of Turtle Club, of course, the subscription model is to eliminate the need for ads because with ads, you are basically beholden to the advertiser. They are your customer. So... We know that advertisers can be boycotted, harassed, bothered, and a lot of them just don't want to deal with it and give it to the pressure. And I don't want to be behold. I don't want to have like my balls held like that by these asshole, like kind of like weak business. So I don't blame them, I guess, but you know, I don't want my revenue to be in the hands of somebody who isn't all in on what we're doing here and by joining turtle club you are the customer you make it show that we are only here to serve you fuck advertisers only one advertiser so go ahead and join uh that's the best way to do it okay also if you guys like the content that we have here at tv daily news and you want to support what we do sorry this week i don't have a freestyle i've been kind of busy i haven't had time um but i'll pr i'll try to have a freestyle next week so you can uh uh, I've linked at the top. There's a link to something called Turtle Chat. You can't do the super chat here. We're demonetized. You've been that way for almost two years now. So we just went and built our own. It's called 
turtle chat. So if you click at the link at the top, you can donate whatever amount of money you want. I will get a notification when you do that. And I will bring up the message that you write with your donation for the class to see. I'll read it out loud. It acts just like a super chat. It's just as good. Or you can just do it with the cash app. My cash app is dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. I'll get a notification on my phone right here. And you guys can, uh, we can read it out loud to the class. Okay. Um, so I think that's about it. Uh, we'll do the rest of the stuff later. But yeah, let's just jump right into it, folks. I've also shared this on the socials. You guys know by now at Dr. Turtle Boy. I passed 25,000 subs. Uh, what am I at? I was, I've gained like a few thousand new followers on Twitter. Pretty cool. I passed 25,000 today. So that's pretty cool. And we passed 24,000 on YouTube. That's pretty cool too. Not bad for constantly being kicked off there. Also go like our newest Facebook page, just Turtle Boy or my personal one, Clarence with Emerson. Dude, Turtle Boy's hot, man. Right now it's hot. It's hot in the streets. So go like everything. All right. So did you guys watch uh, Tim cast yesterday? Uh, one, if you watched it, two, if you haven't seen it yet, just be honest. One, if you've watched it, two, if you hadn't seen it, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. There, there is so many turtle emojis in there. Like it was insane. Lionel Lameeks. It was wild. It was absolutely wild. Let me just say that. Seven pounder with the cash app sends 10 bucks and he says for killed it on Tim cast. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. So what, I mean, I want to hear honest feedback about what happened, what you guys thought about it. If you haven't seen it yet, well, I'll, well I'm going to talk about how it went, but I want to hear some honest feedback. So let's see. My favorite part was the dude who was adamant about you looking like Mike, the situation. Somebody said that nobody said that. At Tim Cast, they said that? I don't remember that. Did I miss that? Somebody said I look like Mike the Situation? I've heard, I've gotten that before. I'm not going to lie. Well, thank you, Julian. I appreciate that. Been watching Tim Cast for five or six years now. Great, man. Great. Clashing of worlds here. What does the storm think about it? Uh, we can get to that, I guess. They don't really matter that much. Um, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. So, um, Some guy, oh, some guy in the comments. So I've never seen comments move that fast. And obviously there's a lot more live viewers on his channel. It averaged, I think it got up to like 37,000 live viewers last night on his channel. Um, obviously we don't have that. I mean, how many we got here? We got 172 on 175 on YouTube. We got 88 over on Rumble. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to read both comments right now. Let's see. And there's the rumble rant here. Yes, we do have the rumble rant over here. Turtle boy aliens. That's correct. Um, so I'm trying to hear what you guys honestly thought of it. And I'll tell you about my experience, what it was like. Um, I was super excited for you, but irritated that Tim was so pissy. Not everyone agreed with him. <laughs> we can get to that. We can get to that for sure. Uh, let's see. You killed it. The Donald Trump mentions were odd though. Okay. We can get to that. Uh, well, it was a joke. I was kidding around. I don't really blame Trump for those. Um, because that's what I'm saying. CNN, like they will blame the Paul Pelosi thing somehow on Republicans. That's what they always do. I wouldn't blow smoke up your ass. You look like you were part of a normal show. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Tim can be ponderous, but you killed me. Yeah. I mean, so that's the thing. It's like, so, uh, and, but let me see. Did you know Andy? No went on Tim cast six months ago. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get more into it. Okay. So let me, I'll be perfectly frank about what I, how I felt. So I got there and first of all, this house is amazing. I did not realize like, this is where he lives and it's a, it's like a compound. It's huge. And you go in there and there uh, is uh, it's like the, the first floor and they bring you in, you know, cat, nice couches and everything. TVs everywhere. Big cutout of Donald Trump drum set, uh, pool table, you name it. So you hung out. I got, they flew me down there to DC. They picked me up at the airport. They brought me to this hotel, which is a pretty cool hotel, a diner. The diner was the lobby. That was interesting. And the driver came, picked me up the next day, a really nice guy named Brian. And he brought me to the show. And like we got there and Tim wasn't there yet. And so they showed me around and they brought me downstairs. And there was this guy from Massachusetts there. He's Tim's accountant, I guess. He employs like 35 people. I didn't realize this operation was so big. Tim cast is a big operation. He's got like 
different kind of sh- I have only watched Tim cast. I didn't realize there's like culture cast or something. There's a whole stream about chickens. They have a whole chicken coop with 80 chickens in it. And it just streams the chickens 24 hours. I guess people watch it. App- apparently people watch that. Um, he's got, I had to sign a waiver when I got there uh, for injuries in case I hurt myself skateboarding. Because apparently uh, he has an s- indoor skate park in his house. Cause, and I went down there. It's pretty cool. I got pictures of it. I'll show you later. But he's got uh, a whole indoor skate park with a basketball hoop in it. So we were doing that. I came back upstairs. He was there. We started chatting about shit. First thing I say to him, I'm like, so his house is in the middle of nowhere. And it's, uh, you know, it's he's in Maryland, but like right where Maryland, Virginia and uh, West Virginia all kind of intersect. And I got there and I'm like, first thing I'm like, so like, this is, how do you like living here? This is pretty crazy out here. You're all the way out here. His first thing he just goes, no Antifa. No Antifa. I'm far away from Antifa. So <laughs> some people purchase homes for the schools. Some people purchase homes for, you know, good value, cheap land. Other people purchase homes to stay as far away from Antifa as possible. That's apparently uh, how it was sold to him by his realtor. No Antifa in the neighborhood. So you got that going on for you. No Antifa. Um, but yeah, so I, I went on there and... Uh, he, you know, we started chatting, whatever. Then he brought me upstairs. Uh, it's up on the third floor. It's an amazing studio that they've built in there. And we just start chatting. Now, um, it, a lot of shit was going on at the time. Like we, the, it was right when the Memphis tapes got released and he's all into that shit because you know, there's going to be riots. There's going to be a lot to talk about. And so I knew going into, we were going to talk about two things. We we're going to talk about the Memphis thing and we were going to talk about the Popolosi tape that came out. Now, uh, I, you know, it's not my show. A lot, a lot of people I saw in the comments were like, I wish you'd let the guests talk more. I did see that. Like people like you should have talked more, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, it's not my show. So I, I, it's rude in my opinion to do that. Like you get invited on someone else's show. It's their show. You just, you go with whatever their format is. So, uh, you know, if they want to ask me questions, I'm here to answer, but I'm not just going to like make it all about me, you know? So, uh, how, you know, at the beginning we introduce ourselves on there. I wouldn't say some people said I sounded nervous, but it's just, uh, I wasn't nervous. I'm, I'm a pretty good conversationalist. Like if you ever, if anybody, any of you people ever meet me in person, I'm not awkward at all. I'm exactly the person that I am on here that I am in real life. If you ever meet me. Um, so I got to like, you know, I can talk to anyone. I could talk to anyone and that we, you know, we all sit down you might've seen it. It was me. Uh, I'll just bring, I think I got the video here. Let's bring it up. Let's bring up Tim cast from last night. Melted to perfection. Try the new toasted baguette right. from Panera. See, this is what it's like to be monetized. That's one thing he told me. He's like, you can't, uh, healthy what, the words you can't say because they employees. don't want to get kicked off or demonetized. Oh, there he is. Okay. So basically for the first, I don't know, like 45 minutes, it was, uh, just got gee, back. how many freaking ads are they going to make you watch hey, it? it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm so excited to announce that local. Oh, you yeah, end up with Van Jones writing the only explanation. <laughs> And I just loved how the whole stream, guys, God bless you people, it was just so many of the goddamn turtle emojis. Like, so many people were like, what is with the turtle emojis? I loved it. I love you people for that. That was badass. That was so cool. Um, I did notice, too, when I, I, I obviously didn't read the comments because there's too many to read while it's happening. It's not like this where I can, like, read the comments as they come up. But when I went back and read them, I'm like, holy shit, people won't stop talking about this Eliza Blue person. Did you guys see that? Talk about Eliza Blue. Talk about Eliza Blue. Eliza Blue was a, uh, this woman who was a guest on his show about two or three weeks ago. If you're not on Twitter, you probably never heard of her. She's one of these people you only know if you're on Twitter because she's Elon's girl, basically. She's a woman who has made a name for herself as like the self promote, self promoted almost person expert on human trafficking. She claims that she was human trafficked herself. 
and she's got like this, you know, short blonde hair, but it's, she looks like Megan Rapinoe, kind of like a sexier Megan Rapinoe. And she got on when she was on a show a few weeks ago, she got up and she started like, I'll, I'm going to play it for you, except I hate the freaking ads. I hate them. Let me show you this chick. Cause I, I might want to. I'm very interested in learning more about this chick and kind of doing a deep dive. Yeah, you this should guy. work out neat right. No, no, no. You should it. break free from the machine. Like this is so her. A game was being played. Information. If you need violence, just watch this. This yes, is how she I introduces um, herself. So before I say what I'm about to say, um, I just want to let everyone know that I serve these survivors speaking here as their survivor advocate. And to anyone that needs more information, I will be giving information at the end of this. So if survivors need to step forward, um, and as always, anytime I'm on a show, just know that um, you can reach out to the Human Trafficking Hotline at any time. I can also give that number throughout this uh, stream as well. So let's get it going. Um, so I, tonight I might use the word allegedly at certain points. Um, this has been advised by legal, um, not because I don't believe the survivors that I serve, but it's the um, legal way to do it. So let's get it going. This is an official press release. I talked for 30 These seconds. These are not my words. These, this is a survivor. I don't know. I don't think she's hot. As a survivor of the Tate brothers, mm -hmm. I understand how difficult it can be to come forward and speak. So she claimed this is right when the Andrew Tate shit went down um, about what right after he was arrested. And so she's going to get on here and she's going to read. She claims that these are testimonials from what she calls survivors of human trafficking. And Tim actually calls her out on this he's like what does that mean survivor like what, what did you survive survive sounds like you make it seem like you're going to die was somebody going to die from this no then you're not you're not really surviving anything but she's talking about that so she's reading these on these just reading off a piece of paper nobody knows if these are real and she does this i swear to god for like 10 minutes Watch. speak out about what happened to you but when social media gives us a glimpse into the extreme harm that others cause I feel obligated to step forward and speak out against it. Stop it. If these words can prevent one woman from being an alleged victim of Andrew and, and Tristan Tate, it justifies the risk that I'm taking. It can be scary, overwhelming, and you may feel like you don't have anyone to turn to. If you or someone you know is a survivor, know that you are not alone and that there is help available. By coming forward together, we may be able to find justice for ourselves and prevent these perpetrators from hurting. First of all, this is so lame. Like, this is a buzzkill. This is why all those people in the comments were like, Eliza, like, Tim's audience has no interest in this whatsoever. Like, this woman just gets up here. This goes on, dude, for like 10 Anyone or 15 else? minutes. It is. Like I it's, won't ask. It's a, it's a buzzkill, isn't it? And what's with the shoulder pads? Everyone's saying that. What is with the shoulder pads? Those people to change their opinion for our sake. I would just ask them to consider one thing. What if you're wrong? Oh my is God. it possible? And oh, if Jesus. it is. Cringe. You can wait for the court to do its job before attacking. Okay. Break free, th break free through the barrier of silence. Take your power back with. That's what I know. So, so just to clarify that these are two victims that are coming forward, but they're choosing to remain anonymous. And I'll tell you why. And and, and I heard kind of two words, and here, it, trafficking. And if, and, and if you look over here, if you look over in the comments on this, and so this is, I'm just explaining why there's so many Eliza Blue comments on our show. They do this every show now. And everyone's just like, boo, <laughs> crocodile here. We want facts. Somebody, the funniest comment was somebody goes, I'm a survivor of listening to this woman not shut the fuck up. Like what? What? Oh my God. The, the woman just, I, and her whole story, a lot of people have begun looking into this thing on Twitter. I haven't had a chance to, but since she's so talked about now uh, and really has a lot of influence, I'm going to do a deep dive into this woman. I, I, I know bullshit when I see it, man. This sums up with this check. There's something going on here. I don't know if it's a money thing. Some people just like attention. But I'll tell you one thing. She has Elon Musk's ear. She can get people suspended. Like, uh, it did sound, right? It's just like, what? So, you, so you're like Miss every person who's been affected by Andrew Tate just comes to you for some reason. And just writes you a letter and we're just supposed to believe you. Tim Poole's audience is mostly conservative bros. 
right? Like they're, it, they don't want to hear that. Like they're, they're just like, this is not why we come here to listen to some short haired Megan Rapinoe looking chick with blue hair lecture us about survivors. Like th when you hear the word survivor, the first thing I think of is the Kavanaugh bullshit. Remember the Kavanaugh witch hunt? That's a, believe survivors, survivors. They fucking loved that word. And they started, that's become like a liberal feminist buzzword survivor survivor come on so would you survive you said okay so worst came to worst brett kavanaugh dry humped you 35 years ago or you survived or you survived oh congratulations you survived the dry humping good job good job oh. <laughs> thoughts and thoughts and prayers thoughts and prayers lady anyway so it's just like that's what we associated with christine blazy ford obviously she's a liar uh, and, and he just got destroyed. Like they got destroyed in the comments. I, they don't read the comments, obviously. They just, I mean, that, that's probably smart. I probably shouldn't either. Um, but you know, they just went into it and, and this woman made the episode kind of all about her and it was not cool. Like it was like, not, it, it just, Johnson, why are you naked? Because my t-shirts, it was a buzzkill. So, uh, when I'm on there, like that just explains what all the Eliza blue things are. People are like, talk about it. Now I thought about bringing it up. But again, it's not because I had some thoughts about her going in and but it wasn't really the problem was we didn't have he didn't get enough time to like know me, like uh, understand what I'm about. Um, and he wanted to talk about what he wanted to talk about, which was the topics of the day, which is fine. That's the format of his show. But so the, for the first 45 minutes, we talked about Memphis. And then for the next 30 minutes, we talked about Pelosi. And the Pelosi shit got old after a while. Like we ran out of shit to talk about. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like there was only so many conspiracy theories that you could listen to about like what you thought happened in that tape. And, you know, you're cracking jokes, but there's only so much you can say about the Pelosi tape. And then around, I don't know what, when this happened, probably around uh, like the one. When did it happen? I think it was right around here. It was when they start asking me about Pelosi thinks uh, great. I feel like this is a resolution to something that's kind of was a big deal, then kind of went to the back of my brain. So that's Ian, Ian Crossland. He is uh kind of like the resident hippie liberal, um, on like in like not conspiracy theory. Luke is more the conspiracy theory guy, but just like the open minded hippie who is just so, sometimes he sounds like he took some mushrooms and is just had some crazy vision and he wants to talk about it. Um, the, the woman I really like, Hannah, Claire, she was a really cool chick, conservative. Um, and then, uh, the other guy, Serge, he's the producer. So he's like the people like he didn't talk much. Well, it wasn't his job to talk much. He's like the Cullen in of the thing. Uh, how did they find me? Oh uh, yeah. So they found me because a woman uh, named Cassandra McDonald, uh, she used to be going as, uh, Cassandra Fairbanks. She, uh, she's been following me on Twitter for years. She's from, uh, Shrewsbury central massachusetts so she's pretty familiar with turtle boy and she's now the producer or not the pro I don't know, producer she's like the talent scout or whatever for a show so she's looking she's the one that lines up the guests and uh, obviously she knows who i am and so about a month or so ago people are like we're looking for new guests on there who should we have a whole bunch of you people were like turtle boy turtle boy turtle boy so we her and i started talking and she's like absolutely like immediately made it happen like i had tickets to book to dc the next day. And again, I didn't say anything. Uh, Peter is P Oh, really? I didn't know that. No shit. Okay. Yeah. She was really cool. She was a really nice person. I liked her a lot. Um, and I liked Ian a lot too. They were very cool. And so he, at one point, like, so they keep talking about the Pelosi thing and then Ian, uh, and I'm so glad I saw that video. Cause I, it, it makes things make a lot more sense that some crazy wacko smashed a window and hit a guy in the head. That's a lot easier to believe. It's literally how that guy from NBC yeah. described it, who I believe was fired or censored. Right. He described exactly what happened in the yep. video and then they wanted to hide it. I don't know why they wanted to hide it. The reason why they didn't want it released was because they needed time to stage it. Oh, they yeah, bring in the actors. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. They actually yeah. just shot that. It just yeah, recently. it was filmed. It was the other day. <laughs> it looks just like him. Let's. Uh, yeah, right. I want to hear about you, Aiden, for a minute, because we're. Sure. Gonna, this you is told me and earlier, this is when I was. News. Yes. So, what? Right. How did you get into this whole industry? So, I was uh, an 11th grade history teacher at a public school in Massachusetts. And All right. So, if you if you're a turtle rider, you already know the story. We don't have to replay that whole thing. That's when it got fun for me, right? That's what. This is the point where I got to be me and talk about my story. And they really weren't even that much. I didn't talk about any major stories with them. I told them about like the state police trooper story beforehand, but we never mentioned Monica. 
We didn't get into Andy, Andy, no stuff. I did kind of roast him at the beginning there. I hope he's watching. You're a bitch, Andy. Uh, stop stealing my shit, please. That'd be cool. Um, but I just like, I, they wanted to talk about not necessarily the blog shit. They were interested in my past, which when you think about it is kind of unique. I do have kind of like a unique story in that, like, I'm, a this kind of really controversial, not, I mean, to some people, controversial blogger who creates content and breaks major news stories that have major effects on our culture, our society, our politics in the new England area. And I used to be a teacher. Like that's in a, you know, most people associate teachers with being raging, crazy liberals. And here I am the exact opposite of that. And I have a crazy story, obviously, about how I got into this. Like I was doxxed and threatened and the police care got involved and it was fucking, it was crazy. Like the whole Buffalo story. And I, I briefly got into that with them. I didn't tell them all the details because, you know, the whole, my story takes hours to tell. So you got to sum it up. You got to sum it up. And um, yeah, what are you saying? I wonder if it crossed the line with them. What were people saying? Let's see. He cut you off when you asked the role recent. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Ha I mean, again, it's his show. Um, but yeah, it's, he definitely runs the ship. So it, it is what it is. I was just happy to be there, though. I was happy to be there because it's not the Turtle Boy show. It's the Tim, Tim Cash show. Um, and I'm a guest on there. So you got to keep that in mind. But I, I did have some rants ready to go. Um, and when I started talking about the teaching story, that's when Ian and Hannah really took a big interest in it. And you could tell, like, if you were in the room, like they were like looking at me, like eyes kind of light up, like they had a lot of questions. And we talked about how, cause a lot of people don't know about like the process of becoming a teacher and the things that they tell you beforehand about like girls, especially like keep girls out of your classroom. Like don't do any of that shit, like do extra help outside how I got kids to do better than the other classes, uh, lessons I taught. I've seen some of my former students in the comments these days. They're like, holy shit, Carney's on there now. Carney, like they follow Tim cast and they're like, holy shit, Carney's on there. Wow. Yeah. So crazy shit. Um, so I got to talk about that for a while and that was my favorite part. We, we doing that. And then he went and he read the super chats, uh, about I don't know, 20 minutes later, um, when it all ended like immediately, uh, Ian just came over like and shook my hand. He's like, really, really nice to meet you. And, uh, they, they all followed me on Twitter. They asked for my handle and shit. And then they were like, we're going out. Like they go out to the casino. There's this casino in West Virginia that my Uber driver said she goes to all the time. And I'm like, oh, they invited me. And I'm like, oh, I want to go so bad, but I have to wake up at six o'clock to go to this fuck, get on this plane. So it's just, I couldn't risk missing it. I did like I had a nephew's birthday party today. I couldn't, you know, I really wanted to. And so like, and I'm like, what do you play there? I'm like poker. I'm like, what level? One, two, two, five. He's like one, two. And I'm like, so Tim's rich. So one, two pokers for poor people like me. Uh, that's for, you know, you sit down with uh, one to $300. Whereas two, five, no limit poker. You're sitting down with 500 to $1,500. And I'm like, if you're a wealthy person at the one, two table, it's a, this, it, you're at a huge advantage because money doesn't mean shit to you. It's so it's hard to read you like where other people are playing real poker because like their you know, child support bill is on the line here if they lose everything. So they got to be ri a rich person doesn't give a fuck about money that much. So they can, uh, they can just bet on bullshit. So you never know what a rich person has at the poker table. Like I would advise don't play with rich people because they don't play. You should play poker against people who are of your means. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, I, I, you know, I'm like, but I have, I do have faith that I'll be back. Let's just put it that way. We hit it off real well. Do you say how many subs? Um, he got off that so far. Yeah. I mean, I got a few hundred subs, but I got a lot more Twitter followers. That's the big thing is the Twitter followers. So I don't know if there's anyone new here from Tim cast, but a lot of people I saw today in the comments were like, yeah, we're, you know, just got here from Tim cast. Uh, saw you on there. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to read the comments here. Andy, you're, he really does steal my stories. He really does. Andy, no. People will listen to Tim IRL podcasts during the week and look for guests on the net. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, so he'll have more and more. And this is just a networking opportunity, man. 
it's like it's a great opportunity. Why wouldn't I go on there? And of course, I'm going to talk about whatever the hell he wants to talk about because it's his show and it is what it is. So um, people were like going into it. They're like, I can't stand Ian. So I'm like, I like D. I like I thought Ian was really cool. I thought he was really personable. Um, so yeah, I had a great time there. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Why wouldn't I? Fuck yeah. Um, let's see. I'm having a correct. It's my thing. Yeah. All right. So I haven't been able to keep up with the chat here. Do you guys have any questions about it? You want to ask me? I'm, I'm free to answer anything about this. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, he does do a lot of recurring guests. I mean, if you look at the guests he's had like this in the past like week or so, um, it's, uh, like Joe Kent, Hotep, Jesus, uh, nuance, bro. These guys all have a lot of followers and then Crowder Crowder obviously got a lot more, but Candace Owens, DC Drano, um, who else we have here? Matt Gates, <laughs> the Krasensteins, the Hodge twins, um, the gays against groomers, people, uh, libs of TikTok, Blake masters, Kyle Rittenhouse. These are big, big names, man. So Michael Knowles, like I got to be in the same seat as them. Jesse Kelly, obviously a good friend. Um, uh, Billboard Chris came a few months ago. So yeah, it was cool to be there, man. This is, this is where it's at. It's the peer group. Kanye. I was in Kanye West's goddamn seat, man. That's one thing he did tell me about the Kanye West thing I asked about. I said, you know, what was that like? And he's like, Kanye West was so fake. That's what they told me. Basically, that whole thing where he walked off, Kanye walked off, was staged. That Kanye, I don't know if you guys saw that episode, but basically they, he's on there with Nick Fuentes, who's a fucking moron, and Milo, who's funny, uh, but Nick Fuentes is a legitimate anti-Semite dude, and he is, they, him and Kanye are saying, like, they did this. Like, uh, th th I think Tim said, they did this to you. And, and, and Kanye goes, who is they? And then Nick's like, yeah, who is they? Who is they? Isn't it they? Because they want him to say the Jews, and he wouldn't say it. And because he wouldn't say the Jews, Kanye walked off and stormed off. And according to Tim, they had they had rehearsed that whole thing beforehand. They had talked it all over, had a discussion. They had that same conversation, and it was fine. He was like laid back. He goes, but the second the camera started rolling, he turned into a completely different person. Basically, Kanye's a fraud, he said. He's just a, an actor. And he said that when Kanye got on the plane, that, that he goes, Kanye had a private plane waiting at Frederick Airport, the small airport 15 minutes away. Um, and that he goes, well, I've looked into it since then trying to charter private planes. You cannot do it day of basically like he had the plane waiting for him. The plan was to leave early just like that. That's what he said. So, okay. Um, yeah, but it is, it, it was funny, you know, like there was some trolls in there that like, I didn't notice them at first. That's how irrelevant they were, but people sent me screenshots afterwards and you know, remnants of, uh, you know, the usual losers in there, who the fuck knows who these people are at this point. We're over there. And they were doing the usual shit. Our good friend, the funniest person of them all, though, was uh, Irish Demon, the this moron. And people are like, why are you giving this time? Because uh, it's just funny to me. I'm sorry. This is just funny watching these people like flail their arms when they saw that I was going on this show. Because me being on this show is a complete repudiation of everything that they've that all these people who have spent countless man hours trying to stop me. Like last night was the ultimate symbol that they failed miserably and that they are absolutely no, it was just a reminder that they are absolutely nobody, absolutely nobody. And so, uh, Irish demon, uh, this moron, if you're unfamiliar with them, who came, flew across the ocean to meet me two months ago, to have a to have a face to face chat like a big hardo because we were having a war of words on YouTube, and he flew across the ocean to meet me, and we had a con. I met him at a bar in Newton, and we had a conversation, and he claimed he recorded the whole thing. Uh, we now know Irish Demon. I know you're watching, pal. Where's the recording? You still haven't played it yet. You told everyone the recording's real. Uh, he called. He, he called me irrelevant. Exactly. And so, guys, I'm sorry. You might call Patty. I'm going to get my victory lap and I'm sorry. This is just what I do. Like you, you dunk the ball. Okay. You hang on the rim. When somebody shit talks you on the court, 
and and runs their mouth the whole time, and then you hit a grand slam out of there. You you trot around those bases slowly, motherfucker. You enjoy that shit. You hang on the rim. You know, you do a touchdown dance. You jump in the freaking Salvation Army thing. You dunk the ball on the star in the middle of the field. That's what you do. I'm going to I'm going to have my victory lap. So I apologize if you guys think I'm above this. I'm not. I'm I'm not above this. Let's just be very clear. I'm going to have my victory lap here. Okay? So there's this moron um this is this was so funny. He goes on Twitter. He hasn't tweeted and like it's been like 6 months I think. It's been a while. And I go and he tweets at Tim Cast. And keep in mind, Tim has, I think, one and a half million Twitter followers. When you have that many followers, you're not going to see mentions. You're not going to see when people tweet at you. Like, it's just, you prop, his phone probably gets a million notifications a day. He just shuts them off. You're not going to see him. And people who understand Twitter and social media understand that. But it's funny because Irish Demon acts like a boomer online. Like, I don't think his subs are real. Like, I don't think there's no way these people are real because who would ever follow this moron? And this is what he writes to him. Tim cast, look into who turtle boy is. What time did he tweet this at? Uh, this was earlier in the day. I forget what time, uh, look into who turtle boy, Aiden Carney actually is a vile piece of shit. He is <laughs> ah! uh, like, like he's going to like, Look who he is. What does that mean? Look into who he is. Look into what? Turtleboysporks.wordpress.com or something called Masshole Report? Like, what does that mean? Look into it. Watch some troll mafia channel. Follow Turtle Boy Secrets on Twitter. Like, what are you talking about? What, what are you going to look into, pal? Find out who he actually is. I, I am who I say I am. That's it. A vile piece of shit. He's a stalker and goes after young women. I go after young women. AKA when like crazy psychotic grown women spend their life trying to hurt me and damage my business and contact family members of mine and go fucking insane and post private and post naked pictures of me. Let's be honest. Revenge pornography that I go after, I go after them. No. Okay. That's not what happened, but okay. He's absolutely atrocious. This is just so funny because it's like old man yelling at Sky. Tim Cash, why are you having him on? He's a bad person. Have a, don't you subscribe to Krusty Panties channel? He's a bad person. No, nobody knows who that is, dude. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who Krusty Panties is. You're completely, completely irrelevant. And then he showed up in the chat. He showed up in the chat. Where is it? There it is. This is like the chat. Irish demon says, turtle boy is a disgusting animal. <laughs> the things this guy says, unbelievable. <laughs> is this like old man talk on the things this guy says? They're so bad. Unbelievable. Aren't you reading this chat? Like imagine thinking that Tim is going to read your fucking chat. Dude, one of them paid $20 for a super chat. To be like, check out Mass Hall Report. You got to read about this guy. They paid twenty dollars for that, and they didn't even read it. <laughs> it was just so great. I loved it when I saw that. I'm like, what a victory! What an absolute victory! You know, I I look back to where I was a year ago, depressed, angry, uh, scared, like that. Thought I was getting hacked, and like really like fucked up. And now I look at now and it's just like last night was just the complete dump on the chest. That's what that was. Just a complete facial. That's what they got last night. You not only did you lose, like you lost with spectacular colors. You poked the turtle and this is what done happened. I, not only did I survive it, baby, I thrived. I absolutely thrived. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do. So I win. You lose. Don't poke the turtle. Uh, that was a cool night. Anybody have any more questions before we move on to the content of the evening here about the trip to Timcast? Um, let's see. You got a crew of turtle people who bleed turtle green? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get, to, I guess we'll do the comments later. Why don't, right now, why don't we do um, a little thing called Where You Reppin'? 
So let us know in the comments right now, where are you watching the live show from tonight? Go ahead. All right, let's see what we got here. Bergen, New Jersey, North Bergen, New Jersey, Westwood, Milford, Lynn, Glendale, Arizona, West Bridgewater. Um, let's see, Canton, West Tisbury, Dudley's in the house. Clinton is here, Bedford, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, the Dirty Den, my comfy bed, Douglas, Mashpee, uh, West Quincy's in the house, Weymouth is here, Stonington, Connecticut, Fall River's in the house, hmm. Nashville is here, Lowell's here, Irish Demon Secret Dungeon, uh, Pennsylvania's in the house, um, are you going to do more shows? We'll see, hopefully, Braintree's here, uh, Brockton is here. Auburn is here. Handcuffed in Cary C's basement. Nice. Chirac, East Bridgewater, Hanson, Union, New Jersey, Plymouth, Worcester, Danvers, Charlton. Hmm. Uh, Suwannee County, Suwannee County, Florida, South Hamilton, Massachusetts, Naples, the dark side of the moon. Holden's in the house. Another Holden night. Baltimore's in the house. I flew. I was in Baltimore this morning. Northbridge, Pennsylvania, Coventry, Sturbridge, Oregon, I love seeing the Laguna Fire turtle emojis. Those ones really stood out. Nashua's in the house. Ian's hip hippie basement. Auburn is here. Brockton is in the house. Um, okay. If I missed you, I missed you. Beverly, New Bedford, White Castle, Rockland, Moose Up. Let me check over on, uh, let's see, Rumble. We got Springfield, Missouri's in the house. Randolph and Nantucket all in the house. Okay. All right, so yeah, uh, let's just jump right into the content of the day. So um, first thing, I'm going to get a little heavier. So I want to talk about the situation in uh, Duxbury. Uh, just, it, so this one, this is the hardest blog I've ever had to publish. And I don't know if there's anyone else out there like this, but like, I didn't know these people. Um, never met them in my life. But I've never been, and I don't want to make this about me because it's not about me but I'm just telling you how I feel. Okay. Uh, I rarely get personally affected by blogs. I can't stop thinking about this story. I don't know if there's anyone else out there like that. I can't stop thinking about the story. I don't know why there have been other murders before, but there's never been anything like what happened in Duxbury on Tuesday night. Absolutely. Absolutely horrible. And, Oh, um, yeah. So I, I've just been, as a father, especially it's just struggling to understand, like thinking about it because it's the same dynamic with my kids, uh, older sister, younger son situation and seeing their pictures and seeing, you know, uh, I'll bring up the blog uh, that I did on this. Uh, so getting a little heavy here, guys, I apologize. We were just having a laid back time this is a heavy one, obviously, but I didn't want to write about this because it was so heavy. This woman's name, um, is Lindsay Clancy. Uh, she was a nurse at, a, a, of all things, a delivery nurse at Brigham, not Brigham Women's, uh, Mass General in Boston. And she uh, has pictures of her three kids, a five-year-old girl, a three-year-old boy, and a seven-month-old baby boy all over her page. Okay. And it's just everywhere. There's her husband. Right. And like the things that obviously Facebook is not real life. Like some people are not who they are on Facebook. Right. It can be a lot of uh, fakeness, um, inauthentic, inauthenticity, whatever. Um, but that hers seemed so genuine, you know, like this woman, this cle was clearly a happy family. And like when you see what the women, the woman, uh, was writing, you know, so unbelievable, thankful, um, for this family and this life, best moment ever. How did I get so lucky? My favorite moment of my life. All I want is to see you smile. Okay. So this is heavy, right? So when I first heard about this, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to write about this. This is, I don't know what I'd say. Um, but then the more I thought about it, I'm like, I'm going to defend a murderer. Like I'm going to, you know, like I never thought I'd see that day, 
but uh, I just couldn't stop thinking about this one, and I and I and I feel more certain about it today. Right, um, seeing those pictures, uh, the first thing I thought of, the very first thing I thought of. So, if you're unfamiliar, she killed all three of her kids. Uh, the baby died yesterday. Um, the uh, on on Wednesday, Tuesday night, six o'clock. Uh, this woman, uh, let's just do the backstory, okay? She's suffering from postpartum psychosis, which is a very serious psychological issue. It uh, causes hallucinations. Uh, it causes uh, just a you to be unfamiliar with reality. Um, it is, you know, uh, extreme depression, rapidly changing moods. It should be treated as a medical emergency. And it was with this woman. It was treated as a medical emergency because she was in inpatient care, which means stay over. But that lasted for one day, I'm being told, before she got sent to outpatient, which means she's going to go five days a week. And the husband knew the, that she was obviously struggling with this. So he was working from home because of that now um he re recognized that his wife was not well i don't know the details of what he thought she was capable of or what but there is no way he would have left that house with her in it if he thought like this woman this is gonna be dangerous to the kids you know um that this was gonna be like if he thought that his children were in serious danger he would never have left and he left to go get takeout, came back 30 minutes later or whatever. He found her first. She had jumped out the window and tried to kill herself. I'm hearing conflicting reports about how she's doing. I heard she broke her back. I can't confirm that. And he walked into the house and she hung all three babies. At first, people were saying she choked them, but she hung them all. And I just can't imagine what a, a person doesn't do that unless they're so fucking sick. Yeah, she hung them. And a person does not do that unless they're so fucking sick in the head. Obviously dangerous. Obviously dangerous. And the first thing I thought of was i feel so bad for her that she lived because she is so sick and she just wanted to die obviously and i think a woman I, I i screenshotted a comment that i thought really stuck with me from someone they said when i had ppd after i had my son i looked at my kids and said they deserve a better mom and they deserve a better version of me and it eventually turned into i want to die but I don't want them to live without me. And that's when I realized I needed help. I didn't want to hurt them at all, whether it was physically or mentally. Um, so, uh, like I've seen a lot of that. I've noticed that since I've written this blog, most people that are sympathetic towards her are women, particularly mothers, which is the craziest part about this, right? They, they usually be the most protective of children, but they're the most sympathetic towards her because so many women struggle with this. It's a chemical imbalance in your brain. This is not who she is. The only difference between Lindsay Clancy and any other woman out there with kids is luck. That's all this was. This is like one in a million severe PPD psychosis that turned her into a monster like if you're if you got bit by a zombie and you turn into and then you bit someone like you're suppose you're this is a fake obviously but it's best comparison to come up with like you somebody in your family who you love turns into a zombie and bites you like do you blame them no you're a fucking zombie right that's what she was she was a monster she got turned into a monster her brain turned her into a monster 
So she killed what she did is not rational. She obviously loved those kids more than anything. And the only thing I can, what uh, I would guess that her brain was telling her well, this is just my hypothesis was that, uh, sh this is what was best for them. Like, that's how irrational she was thinking. Like, this is, I'm, this is what I love them so much. I'm doing this for them. That's the way a person thinks in a situation like that. So, um, you know, a lot of, um, I did notice that, you know, some, I was very understand. Like I just immediately felt so bad for this woman. Um, I think the most people who were against me in this, the majority were, there were some women, but most were men who were against this and, and they fairly, I think, or they said they brought up like, what if a man did this? Would you be as sympathetic? Um, you know, it's like, yeah, she had a phone to call, you know, 911. You're not, she wasn't thinking that straight. Like, she, you're not thinking like that. Your, 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 your brain is taken over by a virus. You're not thinking like that. And yeah, it's like when you think about it too, you're like, holy shit, the very act of having children killed them. And I cannot stop thinking about obviously not only her. But we have to remember she's not the victim here. Uh, but someday she's going to snap out of this. I mean, it's not going to be like this forever. And that is when hell starts. That is when absolute fucking... That's why I feel bad she didn't die. I, like, that is the worst part about this for her is that she lived. I feel bad for him, the husband that he lived like that's like if i was if i was in his situation man you guys know i've struggled with some issues there is no i'm sorry all the therapy in the world i would have jumped off a bridge by now like i'm sorry dude like dude i couldn't handle that no fucking way could i handle that i would die i would fucking die okay and so I was just like, now I also thought about it too, about his relationship with her. Um, because when you, like I said, when you go back on their, they seem like a very happy and loving couple. Now it's just, I don't know them. They could, they could be horrible with each other, but it appears as if that was an accurate predictor based on what he recently said, because we'll get to that in one moment. But I was like, I'm like, what would I do in this situation? If I was him, well, first of all, I, I'd want to die. Um, but I'd want to like, I, I hate to say it is I, like most people would say, well, obviously you'd, you'd turn on it. Right. And he'd avoid, like, I wouldn't do it. I would never turn my back on. Like if I truly was in love, truly was in love, right. With this person who did this monstrous thing, and took away the thing I love the most. It's like how you've already lost everything. And again, I don't blame anyone else that views this differently. This is a very sensitive issue. But I would have honestly, like if I was in a situation and I lost everything that I loved, all three of them, and all that was left was my wife, right? If I was him. And if they're truly in love and all that stuff too, it's like, I couldn't, I, I'm like, I, I wouldn't have it in me to abandon her too, because that's all you would have left. And you're just like, how can you in her, in her time and need to like, she lost her kids too. It's like, it's like a, a, all I can think of it is, is like a different person killed her kids. A different person did. And that is not who she is. So I would not, like, I don't know. I, I understand most people probably wouldn't. But I would not, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave her if I was him. That's just me. And I, if he, if he does, that's fine too. Like, I totally respect whatever choice. That's the other thing. People need to shut the fuck up about, like, what he should do or what is appropriate. Like, people need to shut the fuck up. I've seen some really 
horrible, hateful comments about this all, and people just need to shut the fuck up. I can understand being mad at her or whatever, but it's the people who are mad at him and blaming him for going to the store, right? And saying, oh, you left her there with the kids. You never should have done that. Oh, motherfucker, do you think you would have done that if he thought that, if he really truly thought that that was capable of happening? Like, dude, the dude just lost fucking everything. You don't think he's punishing himself for that? And you're going to get on here and be like, well, you should be charged too. What's he like? Shut the, f can you just shut the fuck up for five seconds? Is it that fucking hard that you just can't shut the, f like you have to say something about everything. You just, you can't shut your fucking mouth for five fucking seconds about it. This horrible, unspeakable tragedy has happened. This man has lost everything and you're going to fucking judge him. I want to fucking donkey punch every one of these fucking assholes who says something like that and it's always a guy by the way it's always a guy like shut the fuck up mr law and order fucking bitch and i, I see the gofundme shared in there some people asked me to share the gofundme i'm not going to share it and it's not because of the money first of all it's, it's raised over half a million dollars but that's not the point if i were him and I'm just trying to put myself in his shoes. If I were him, that money to me, I wouldn't want it because I only have that money. That money represents my dead children. That money is pity that my children are gone. And that's like a, a, a when you spend that money, you're thinking I have this money because my kids are dead. I wouldn't want that money. That's, that's just how I'm thinking. Is because he would trade all that money in for his kids. I'm just saying I wouldn't want it. And so that's why I'm not sharing it is because if I was in that situation, not that they need me to share it, they're raising plenty of money, but I wouldn't want it. That's just how I personally feel. Now, his, his GoFundMe is everywhere. Um, so you can just find it, whatever. Um, but I did. It's right here. Oh, well, okay. So this guy, and I like Kevin. He's been a nice commenter before, but it's just like, this is the dumbest fucking comment and uh, he should take it down. I mean, I'm not going to make him take it down, but it's a stupid fucking comment. He posts Chris Watts. He goes, this happened in Colorado. Chris Watts, the guy who killed his wife, his pregnant wife and two kids because he was trying to fuck his girlfriend without the kids being around and they got in the way and, and started a new life with them. So he killed his pregnant wife and his two children for completely selfish reasons because he wanted to fuck. And I'm just like, like to compare, he goes, I don't remember the same sympathetic reaction. Yeah. I mean, is that the stupidest comment ever? You know why there was no, because he's not suffering from postpartum psychosis. I mean, what is with men? I don't want to fucking crap on my own people, but what the fuck? Is that a real comment? We, we don't have fucking ovaries, dude. We're built differently. We don't have these issues. We don't have postpartum psychosis. Okay. You understand that? The fucks are your brain. We'll never have to deal with that. Also, he didn't, she didn't kill her kids because she wanted to get fucked. That's a big thing. Chris Watts wanted to get fucked. Like, uh, unbelievable. What a stupid question. The more I think about it. But anyway, here's what the husband and this man, this is a real man, what this guy posted. Let me read it to you. It says, I want to ask all of you to find it deep within yourselves to forgive Lindsay as I have. The real, oh, that's heavy, man. I, again, that's exactly what I said. I'm like, uh, that's, he just starts out. I'm going to forgive her. The real Lindsay was generously loving and caring towards everyone. Me, our kids, family, friends, and her patients. The very fibers of her soul are loving. All I wish for her now is that she can somehow find peace. I promise I'll put all my energy into healing and rediscovering my purpose. I owe that to all of you. Duxbury Fire and Police. Our compassionate healthcare workers, 
our local faith leaders, the Microsoft community, who, I, maybe he works for them, I don't know, and especially Cora, Dawson, and Colin. Those are the children. I don't know how or when I'll be able to do it, but your love and generosity will help me get started. I know that love always wins. Cora, Dawson, and Callan, you gave me so much in your short time here. I don't know if the pain will ever go away, but I'll do my best to carry on in your honor. Dada loves you so much and will always remember you with love and gratitude. And so that, right, ladies and gentlemen, is a real man right there. That is heavy. Like that man forgave. You understand how strong you have to be to forgive your wife for that? That's a man. That is a man who, when he took his, he took his vows seriously through everything, you know, through sickness and in health. Well, this is sickness, which has happened here. His children are dead because his wife got extremely sick. It's a horrible fucking thing. She turned into a monster. So, you know, good for him. That's all I got to say. Uh, they, they are, I don't know. And I think it's perfect. I don't know if anyone else is like this. The story is just getting to me. The more I think about it, like it got sent to me. Some people sent this to me a couple hours yesterday before I went on Timcast. And I'm like, I just like i like want like i i i want i cried in the room but it's like i'm like i can't i don't need this right now but this is i'm going on the show in two hours i'm like and i'm like this is so fucking much and i kind of brought it up on the show a little bit um because the more i thought about it and i go on twitter and i see kamala harris and joe biden and all these people right and they're tweeting about somebody named Tyree or Tyre, uh, whatever his name, last name is, um, who was killed in Memphis. Now, obviously, we've seen that tape. It's bad. The cops killed him. And they were arrested and charged. And we got Joe Biden on there. Uh, it, it, I mean, ultimately, what we had, the, that thing, it's black on black crime. That's what that was. Thousands of those incidents happen all across this country. And nobody ever mentions their names unless one of them is a police officer. Apparently that's when it matters. That's when it's like the biggest deal. Of course it's gross. My issue is this. Why is his life so fucking special that he gets mentioned by the president? What about Dawson, Callan and Cora? Were their lives not special? Why isn't Joe Biden mentioning them? Why isn't Kamala Harris mentioning them? Why isn't CNN in Duxbury talking to their family members? Do their lives not matter? This one guy in Memphis, his life fucking matters so much fucking more than everyone else's life. Are you kidding me? What this guy is, what did he do? Did they kill Jesus fucking Christ in Memphis? I understand what the police did was wrong. He was murdered. A lot of fucking people get murdered in this country. God damn it. A lot of people get murdered in this country. But a guy in Memphis gets killed and it's the end of the fucking world. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The only reason they're doing this is for political purposes. And that fucking disgusts me because people are, Biden was talking about yesterday. I want you guys to protest peacefully. Motherfucker, why would you protest at all? Why are you encouraging people to protest? What is there to protest? A man was killed and the people who killed him were arrested. What the fuck do you want? Well, we want people to stop killing each other. Well, it's never that's not going to happen. People are going to kill each other. Cops are going to kill people. People are going to kill cops. Civilians are going to kill civilians. It's going to happen. Oh, you're, so we're just going to riot and, and, and march and protest until murder ends? What? How, how the fuck's that? Gonna, are you going to legislate? You know what we should do? Oh, here's a fucking idea. We should make murder illegal. We should do that. We should make murder illegal. And then it will stop. Oh, yeah. Why didn't I fucking think of that? Dumbasses. 
And unlike, and I tried to bring this up and it kind of got turned shut off on the show. So let me explain myself further. My point with this, the bigger point I was trying to make was that you protest to correct a fixable problem. Martin Luther King protested because he wanted voting rights and civil rights. He got a voting rights bill and a civil rights bill out of it. Objective achieved. What these people have no objective. Unless, of course, it's to abolish the police, which they need to be more open about. They claim they don't want it, though. So then what the fuck are you protesting for? So, but a bigger problem in the country, the biggest problem in this country is not racism. Racism is not the biggest killer in this country. The biggest killer in this country is mental health. It is a huge problem in this country. When I was struggling with mental health issues, dude, I couldn't get a psychiatrist. Couldn't fucking get one. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Well, the COVID, then hire more. That's a cry. That's a problem that legislators should fix. Yeah, they keep talking about like, they keep talking about mental health. You're right. This story should be, that's my that's my point right there, blurred lines. That's exactly my point that I'm trying to make here. Is that mental health is such a big, they always talk about mental health, right? Well, this should be the poster child for it, that this is what it can do to you. What? And we're not, why aren't we protesting for more mental hospitals? Why aren't we protesting that the government stop everything it's fucking doing and figure out a solution so that people don't have to wait six months to see a shrink. Why don't we do that? Why don't we open more beds up in hospitals? Why don't you fix the fucking problem, assholes? That's the problem. Not just with her. With all these shootings that happen. A lot of these people are suffering from mental health issues. Obviously not as bad as her. Like, I'm not giving a pass to this fucking Nicholas Cruz and those assholes. Fuck them. Fuck their mental health, like quite frankly, because it ain't shit compared to what she went through. And, but there is help out there that people could be getting and it's just not there. And that is unacceptable that we live in a country like that where mental health is a fucking, that much of a problem to fix. Why aren't these people doing that? It's like the cause of fucking so much trauma. And killing. And we don't do shit to stop it. And that's why I get so fucking mad. I just get so mad. How a black guy dies in Memphis. And we all. That's the fucking story. That's the fucking story. That we have to talk about forever. A black guy got killed in Memphis. Well guess what. A black guy got killed in fucking Seattle. And a black guy got killed in St. Louis. Another guy, black guy got killed in Topeka, Kansas. Another black guy got killed in New Orleans. Black people get killed a lot. But we have to fucking stop everything we're doing. Everything. And CNN, MSNBC, and that's me, the headline fucking story about some fucking guy named Tyre in Memphis who got killed. That has to be the fucking front and center story. And three fucking kids are dead in Duxbury, Massachusetts. Fuck you, BLM. Fuck you, media. Fuck you, politicians. Fuck all of you for ignoring that shit. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I fucking hate your guts. It, and it's just like, I actually was watched CNN yesterday just to see what they're saying. And they were criticizing Republicans for not talking about this enough. How dare you not fucking read the script, motherfucker? How dare you not make tire iron the biggest fucking story on your agenda today? Well, guess what? It's fucking not. One guy getting killed in Memphis? Isn't national fucking news. It happens all the fucking time. All the time. And you only fucking care because it's cops. You only care because it's cops. Imagine, by the way, if those cops were white. This is black cops we're dealing with too. They're trying to bend over backwards to make this about race, which is the most retarded thing I've ever fucking heard. Retarded. So I'm pissed off man i'm just pissed off by the way the media 
automatically treats every time a black person is killed by the cops as stop the fucking presses. This happens all the time. If it happens all the time, then why is it like such a big deal when it fucking happens if it happens all the time? Why do we remember their names if it happens all the time? If it's so common, why do I know all the names? Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. That's my thoughts. I'm pissed off. Sorry about that. But anyway, um, I think that's all I have to say about that. But uh, okay. Um, by the way, if anybody, uh, I don't know if, let's see, did I post the turtle chat? Let me check turtle chats. If you, anybody wants to donate, by the way, turtle chat is listed at the top there. Uh, you can donate whatever amount of money you want. It goes to the program, goes to what we're doing here at Turtle Boy Daily News. And um, yeah. So anyway, that's my fucking rant. I'm sorry. I'm pissed off. So pissed off. And it just really annoys me. But anyway, let's uh, go on to the next topic, shall we? All right, let's talk about, I'll oh, talk about more people are going to piss me off. All these people are going to piss me off. Let's talk about, okay, this woman. At least she's funny. Let's make fun of her. All right, so the Anna Wall story is taking a back burner this week. Uh, Brian Walsh was arrested for killing his wife last week. Of course, this guy's the dumbest fucking uh, murder ever. But I noticed that there was this woman going on TV a lot by the name of Pamela Barty. She is from, uh, let's see. She is from West Roxbury, Massachusetts. And she wears a pantsuit, so she must know what she's talking about. And she's been kind of front and center for the last few weeks as like the official spokesperson for Anna Wall. She says they're good friends. At least she said that at first. So let me read this post that she made. I think this is on LinkedIn. She's like, my friend, Anna Walsh, a powerhouse businesswoman. And Supermom, powerhouse businesswoman, has been missing for almost 13 days now. Our message is twofold. Please continue to pray for Anna so that she is found. And to the government agencies who have custody of her children, please keep her three boys under six years old together. Okay, that's fair. And do not separate them. Please continue spreading light and awareness so the family can have answers and closure regarding the disappearance and avoid stay together. Thank you to CNN and Fox News for allowing us the platform to speak out and send our message. Uh, we have received hundreds of messages of love and support, plus families willing to take in all three boys, the love and support. So she kind of makes herself the center of this, like the unofficial spokesperson for the Walsh family, for Anna's side at least, because Anna's mother lives in Serbia. And, um, you know, uh, this so this woman has kind of made herself like okay, you talk to me about this. I'm her good friend, right? Uh, here's some quotes that I took from her. I've been watching this woman for a while, and I got more on her coming. Trust me. She was an absolute radiant spirit, the kind of person that when you walk into a room, you just feel her energy. Like what? Th th that is the kind of quote right there. That's something you say about someone you know real well. Like, that doesn't it sound like she wants to make it seem like she know I've been in the room with her. She has so much radiant energy. She's a brilliant businesswoman and what I like to call a super mom. What? She's one of those people who walk in a room and lights everything up. You can't forget a person like that, said Pamela Barty, a friend and former colleague of her. Like, th this is real personal shit but it's also real vague like you could say that about it's just like a really generic thing to say, like oh they they light up the room okay like if i die please don't say that and and all you have to say about me is that oh he lights up a room and he has a radiant spirit it's like what that's all you have to say about me that's so generic and like cookie cutter it just something about it seemed off, like her comments. Some of Anna's friends are holding out hope for her. I think this is the most powerful thing you can do in a situation like this. People coming together and staying positive um, for prayers because there are so many unanswered questions at this point in time. The best thing we can all do is come together and pray for some answers. Following the arrest of their father, 
Brian Walsh in connection to their mother, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, Anna's friend, Pamela Barty told people, uh, Barty says shortly after Massachusetts, so she, she's just always a spokesperson. Here she is on Fox news. It says Anna Walsh tried to see the good in husband friend says friend. She has been a power woman and just a businesswoman as long as I've known, like she keeps saying this shit about like, and when you go on her website, this is the way she talks about herself too, is like, I'm a power business woman. What? What does that mean? It just sounds so scammy, doesn't it? Sounds so like snake oil salesman. Like I'm a power woman. And here's my 10 ways to become a power woman and be a super mom. What? There's just something about the way this woman talked that seemed off. She never talked about anything personal. Then how are you friends? She never talked about pain. She never really talked about her husband much. Yeah, probably because you don't talk to her. It was all about her kids and business. So you don't talk about anything personal except for your kids. What? And business and elevation. Elevation? And how she could help other people. Personally, I never saw any indication of any issues. Home. Yeah, that'll happen when you don't talk to a person ever. And you're not friends with them. That might have something to do with it. So she goes on to say, very girl boss of her. Um, I think nobody saw it coming. That's the horrible part about it, right? Pamela Barty said, who met Anne about a year ago. Here she is on Fox News. Now, As more evidence is revealed and the couple's... Now, this other woman here, right? uh, oh. Natasha Sky, she might know, she might have had more interactions. She seems a little more genuine about it. But I don't know about her, the other one. A finding on our live is fading fast. So I spoke with Anna's friends, Natasha and Pamela, as their concerns grow. Watch. What do you know about Brian? No. Or was that against her personality? That's if anything perhaps was going on, would she ever display it? Or no. was that against her personality? That's what probably we felt, that absolutely nothing about personal. And also at the party, she was alone. She was not with the husband. Even if she would be a sponsor, she never showed up to social settings with, with Brian. Him, no, that not was the, unusual. I have to ask you, forgive me for asking this question, but do you believe Anna is alive or do y'all believe Anna is dead now that you know what you know? One in a million chance. That's what I would answer. Not because, because Pamela and I know her personally, how Anna is driven and how she's independent, okay. she would find a way to reach out to people if something would happen to her. Uh, I, If the person is missing for 11 days, nowadays with the social media, with the world being connected so quickly and with the evidences that unfortunately came up and especially with the no. Um, no, no, police no, no, no. reports, every day it's unfortunately looks dim and dark. When I just saw... Here we go the post there that, you know, the social media post missing. My stomach went upside down. When I saw the social media, that's how you found out she was missing on a social media post. She sounded like a great friend. She sounded like a really close friend. My, my stomach went upside down. I knew something was wrong. So obviously we got to talk about the children because the children are in child protective yeah. custody. So the other woman does most of the talk of that interview, but she's on there a lot. The investigation, even to this day, 11 days later, we still don't have answers on where she is and what really happened. And there's big question marks everywhere. Said friend, Pamela Barty, we're just praying for closure. But you don't know her. Like, I know this woman as well as you do. And here they are doing the candlelight vigil. Here to honor like, always seeking out the spotlight. Always seeking out the spotlight. Now, then, when a few days later, when they charged this guy with murder, she just happens to be outside the courthouse. So this power boss, girl boss, woman just sits outside Quincy District Courthouse all day. This is what she does and conducts interviews. It's this essence of rage and relief at the same time. Rage and relief? Right? Rage that potentially something horrific has happened and relief that something's being done about it. Justice is starting to be served. So like what like if you were her and you didn't know this woman very well, which clearly she did not, wouldn't you say I'm I'm not the appropriate person to talk to about this? Maybe you should talk to her family. 
Like that would be the right thing to do. But somehow so she contacted the media clearly on her own. Because all these people are like, she's like the go-to spokesperson for the family. Uh, it, get, it gets very emotional. It when, gets emotional? When, you th- when I think about her, I, I, I can't imagine such a horror happening inside the home and potentially it being the, the cause being her significant other. I mean, her husband, right? That, that to me shakes me to the absolute core at this point in time. And it's, I can't even like process. You can't even process like what? Again, how about this one? This is the interesting one. So this is when she's interviewed by News Nation. I want to bring in one of her friends, Pamela Barty. Watch this Not one. only was a friend of Anna Walsh, but also used to work with her. You can come right around yeah. here. Um, yeah. Give me a, a bit of a feel for the girl that you knew, the, the colleague that you knew, the, what she talked about. The, when she that talked you about knew. Family. Absolutely. I mean, her, her boys were everything. Absolutely everything to her. She was driven. She was the super mom. She's... There we go with the driven and the super mom again. These are such generic nonsense things. And like, I like the, the comments. She says there, the boys were everything. I don't know anything about Anna Walsh. I've never met her before, but if a mother, if a mother I didn't know was dead, that would be the first thing I would say about them is like her kids were everything to her. Like, yeah, like, yeah, of course. Like, so what I'm saying here is like nothing about what she's saying to me when I first heard this sounded personal. Like I would assume any mother would be like, would say that like can you give us something specific about her that only you would know as a friend that i couldn't have assumed on my own and and keep me updated on that celtic score please super radiant spirit i mean she repeats the same room, shit feel her energy same shit dancing smiling laugh dude she just repeats the same shit in every interview but super radiant walks into a room Come on. Thing. I mean, that's Anna. So it's very hard for me to see that in a past tense. So I just say that she is, her spirit still remains. It's hard to hear this news today because up until today, right. there was hope. There was hope that she was still a missing person, that maybe, you know, God willing, we would find her. And today with the charge of murder, the expectation is we won't see her again. Right. That's... How are you processing this? It's honestly been extremely difficult to process at this point in time. It's like, Everything's happening all at once. It's almost like you knew, but you didn't know at the same it's ex- time. Like it's been extremely difficult to process. Has it? What have you been? You're not really, you're not friends with her. What are you processing? Yeah, you didn't you, want to believe. You didn't want to believe it, right? And then today almost came as this massive fear of this massive rage in me when I read massive about it. Massive rage. But then there was also this relief of what maybe there'll be some justice for her if and by the way another thing that set me off that i thought was strange about her i'm like she's never emotional in these interviews like never seems sad always just matter of fact like it's just business like this is not how you would be acting if a close friend of yours was murdered would it i don't think anna walsh had many close friends in my opinion based on what from i've seen her she was somewhat fake herself like she left her kids five days a week to work, be a power boss, whatever in Washington, DC. She's not from this country. I think she's shady. She was involved in her husband selling fake Andy Warhol paintings. Like she married a scumbag. She knew her husband was a scumbag and she was with him anyway. And they were living this fraudulent fake life together. So I don't think she had, I don't, I think there's no friends speaking out on behalf of Anna Walsh because I don't think she had many friends. That's just my guess. And so this woman is like, well, I'm, I was in a room with her once I saw her at something and we're both from Eastern Europe. So I guess people will just assume that we all know each other. Meanwhile, Anna, I would like to point this out. Like she's acting like we're all cozy. Okay. Pamela Barty is from Albania. Anna Walsh is from Serbia. I have friends from Albania, okay? They fucking are the most racist people to Serbs. <laughs> they fucking hate Serbs. Like they dude, I'm I told them one time, my buddy, I'm like, I met uh, like 15 years ago. I was down in Martha's Vineyard. I'm like, oh, I met this hot Serbian chick. Cause there's a lot of European chicks on Martha's Vineyard. I'm like, oh, I met this hot Serbian chick. And he's like, Yeah, 
fucking Serbs. <laughs> That's all he's like, fucking Serbs. Stay away from them. I'm like, yeah, she was telling me that because Ser Serbia doesn't touch the ocean. And so I'm like, yeah, she was telling me that like uh, Serbia is a beautiful country. They got, they got a lot of mountains. He's like, yeah, enjoy your fucking mountains. <laughs> That's all he said to me. Enjoy your fucking mountains. Like Albanian, I don't know if there's any Albanians out there. Every Albanian person I met hates Serbs. Everybody in that region hates Serbs because Serbia causes problems for the rest of the Balkans. Like there was a fucking war that broke out in the mid nineties. Like Serbia basically declared war on Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Like everybody hates Serbia in that region. So this idea that like, well, we're all from Eastern Europe. So we get along. It's like, it's like saying I'm from Ukraine and you're from Russia. So we're buddies. Like what? Anyway, let's play some more. This is truly what happened. So we're all trying to figure out what they were like together. I mean, if this indeed happened, if he right. honestly did do this, and it is right. so macabre to think of the details, right. what could they have been like together? Did she ever talk about him? Did she ever give you a feel for what her marriage was like? Like what you say in that situation is like, I talked to her once, so I wouldn't know. Really? To be Not honest, really. you know, I knew her in the professional setting and in the business realms. And she really talked about business all the time, what? talked about her boys all the time and really was just full of positivity and, and light. Never really mentioned him, but I didn't know if that was because of our relationship or, or what. But, you know, I have heard now that she didn't really talk about him much. Well, what's I've heard now Kamala is that. To you, a colleague and a friend, she didn't really yeah. talk about him, and yet she glowed about her children. So right. she had lots to say about her family, just not that member. Correct. Did that? Did you read into that in any way? Like, did it strike you when she went missing that, well, this makes sense because she never spoke about that guy? It was interesting as I started to connect the dots after I saw the missing post. So first off, when I saw the missing post on social media, my stomach, my, my every fabric of my being said something horrible has happened here. Hi, why do you think that? My intuition. I just, I, I looked my at intuition. it and I said, that's not honest. Something is wrong. Did you suspect him right away? After I started reading into some of the evidence that started showing up, then I said to myself, oh dear. Because it wasn't until recently that. But what's I, interesting, you know, Pamela, it yeah. wasn't the first thought that you had. It's that husband. I know it because she never talked about him. She, she wasn't happy. It, that wasn't your first thought. I don't want to say that it is, but it did cross my mind, right? Like, how could this high-powered super mom? High-powered super mom. There we go. Vibrant know, spirit, radiant. Just go missing. That doesn't. That's not. High-powered super mom. Like and then I started to connect the dots when I was reading that she was commuting back and forth. That's a hard. I thought she just moved, you know, and that was it. Five. I thought she moved. So you're such good friends with her, and you didn't know that she still lived in Cohasset, like on the weekends. You didn't, I thought it you guys were week. friends. She was in Washington D.C., um, and that is not an easy life when you have three little kids under the age of six. I can't imagine the pressure that that she was in. Um, Pamela Vardy, thank you so yeah so much for for doing this and sharing, you know, what she was like and bringing. Her like, why is she outside the police station like that? Why? Like I see, I turn on CBS news. There she is outside the Quincy district courthouse. So it's just a lot. Of, then I go on the Instagram and Facebook and they're not even Facebook friends. Like not only like you don't even have to be friends with someone in real life to be Facebook friends with them. And Anna had like a thousand Facebook friends and she wasn't one of them. Like Anna did not, let's be honest here. Anna didn't know you at all. If Anna saw you, she wouldn't know your name. Like you're just making this up because you know she's dead, so she can't call you a liar. Not only that, they didn't even follow each other on Instagram. That's crazy. And so you go on her page, and dude, so this is uh, you check out her website. Like, let's just go to. I'm just gonna go to her website right now. Let's go check out her website. Her website is a trip. Because I I feel like this is all just a scam. To get people to her website, get her name out there. Like we worked together. People are like, who are you? This just has a lot of MLM vibes to it. We got Elevate Through Real Estate. For a limited time, download a free copy of my book, Cracking the Rich Code for a limited time. Crack. It just seems so scam. Oh, like there's a code to get rich. And I'm gonna help you crack it for $19.99. 
Yeah, that sounds legit. That sounds legit. Get it now. And then she always has this ever as seen in time and Forbes. So I, she's got this all over her place. Like I was in Forbes and I was in time. So I look into it and I find her article. I find, I'm like, I Google Pamela Barty Forbes and I'm expecting that Forbes wrote some article about how she's this amazing business person. But it was, it was just her repeating. It was a self. She wrote an op-ed about herself. And it's like, so nothing, it was just like all the same thing. I'm a high powered, super businesswoman. Look at me. Number one, real estate life coach. The fuck is a life coach? I'm a real estate life coach by trade, becoming an international public speaker. What does that mean? International public speaker plus real estate and life coach, helping clients create profitable business strategies Okay, like this is so generic. Diversify revenue streams. What does that mean? So you're gonna make more money, diversify revenue streams, and build international real estate teams. What does any of that mean? All right, let's click on courses. What comes up? <laughs> like, look at this. We got to see this page. Uh, this is what comes up when I just clicked on courses. Why should I take this course? Oh, let's see this video. Let's see what this is. Where do I truly learn this? Or have you taken a course or gone to a seminar and been like, oh my God, I love this, I love this, I love this. And then either you start a deal and things don't really work out as well as you planned. Or you take one of these courses and you're like, I feel like I don't know all of it. Well, if, if you've experienced any of that, and even if you have a simple interest in just learning how to flip houses and just real estate development in general, this course is for you, my friends. This course is designed to literally teach you step-by-step -step process of everything you need to know, really, not just like the button-down version or the version that nobody... What do you need to know to flip a fucking house? You buy it for one price, then you, in you invest in it and improve it, and then you sell it for a larger price, which is more than the cost that you put into it, plus the original cost. That's how you flip a house you're going to take a course on that and like, listen to what she's saying here. It's just so generic. Tells you about, we're going to dig into construction. We're going to dig into a whole bunch of things. But before we get into all that and the whole overview and all that, I want to introduce to you who I am. Okay. Let's I hear am it. the underdog in real estate. Oh, you're the I underdog. I was in the same boat as you. No joke. I used to watch these videos of flipper flop and watch HGTV and look at all these courses that are coming out make six figures in six months by flipping houses, doing all of these things. And I'm just like, why is there a pile of cash right there? <laughs> what? And then you look over here and look what it says. Your, your key to nine figures in real estate. Cause that's how she advertises herself as a nine figure real estate person. She wants to make you believe she's making a hundred million dollars or at least selling a hundred million dollars worth of real estate that she's some high powered woman, right? And you're like the Forbes thing. We know that's fake. The time magazine thing. I've searched everywhere for a time magazine article on her. There's nothing. I can't find a fucking thing. And the Harvard business school thing. When did you go to Harvard business school? Because you're not listed as a graduate from I've researched. I can't find your name anywhere. When did you have time to go to Harvard Business School? According to her story, which she said so many times, she opened up two restaurants in Boston by the time she was 21. You've seen the messages that we had, her and I had together. I asked her, what are the names of the restaurants? She can't tell me. She said she sold them. But she doesn't know what restaurants they were. We do know that she opened up a gelato shop about five or six years ago that failed. It's out of business now. So we, we know of one business that she opened and she immediately got press everywhere, probably because she called them up and it's like, I'm opening a gelato shop. It failed. So, but she's, you're, she wants us to believe that she's this high powered business woman. What? What? Oh my God. There's so much to know. And I started gathering as much information as possible. And I ended up hiring a coach actually, which, which really helped shape my trajectory. However, I knew nothing. Like I literally didn't know anything and I was doing a lot of research before I hired a coach, right? So much like you watching this video, 
So I literally had to sit down and ask myself because I didn't know anything in real estate and I didn't know anything in construction. So I'm here telling you that as somebody who came from the same place as you, who was an underdog her whole life, has a family who basically achieved the American dream and were the underdogs their whole life. Like if I can do it, you totally got this. All you need is a process. All you need is a system in a real one, not just the ones that are just going to basically try to get you to pay for some next level coaching or some other crazy stuff. Like I really want you guys to have this information so that you can transform your That's life. True. So that you can create a legacy. You can create that generational wealth. You can flip and you can use any real estate investment strategy that you want to. This is about you. This is not about me. But just to highlight of who I am, who am I? Okay. I'm Pamela Barty. I have been featured for my real estate background in Forbes, Time Magazine, graduated from Harvard Business School. What? Babson, Stonehill College for my undergrad. Babson? I mean, it's been a constant learning curve in my life. And I've achieved some really incredible things. Like what year did you graduate from Harvard Business School? I've sold, developed, or acquired over $100 million in real estate deals. I've seen a lot in many different avenues. And so what I decided to do and why I really wanted to create this, why I wanted to create this formula is for you. Because this is the course that I wish I had when I was starting. Like what is that? But you did say that you had it. So like, let's see what happens when you get enrolled now. Okay. Oh, a thousand bucks, <laughs> a thousand bucks. Imagine paying a thousand bucks to listen to her. Oh, but she has check marks here. Why should I take this course? The exact formula used to know you're getting a great deal on a property. Oh, okay. How to maximize your investment. So much more. Ooh, so much more. Learn to fit houses. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, brings you to the price. Oh, there she is with her pantsuit. As featured, oh, she was in the Boston Globe. She's featured in the Boston Globe. Okay. And yes, her gelato shop was part of her uh, her father's pizza business. So they own a pizza shop. That's what, and so week one, identify your market. Oh, okay. Week two, sourcing deals. Is any, like, who's purchasing this? Week three, sellers and negotiations. Week four. Like, well, okay, what even is it? all this shit? What else do we have on here? So there's that. Um, what do we have for, um, let's go back to this page. I'm, I'm like fascinated by this woman. I want to know so much more about her. And by the way, I do have, so many people have messaged us about this woman. I've just been busy with other shit. I'm going to do a dig. Like this woman has a bunch of court shit. She, I'm convinced she is just the biggest scam artist. Let's put it that way. The biggest scam artist. So, um, what else? Underdog real estate. She also claims, look at the, the, the speaking. Let's see the speaking thing. Like who would pick this? Oh God. <laughs> uh, okay. Check this out. This is the speaking. Meet the underdog. She claims to have a podcast, by the way, that's in the top 1.5% of downloads. Um, sure. I guess like that's not even remotely believable, uh, but I guess you, you say it's happening. So, um, uh, so let's see, meet the underdog. What's this? Oh God. Is this a Ted talk? What's this? Oh, I got to see this. <laughs> Look at her. What is an underdog? The underdog is the person who is seen less likely to succeed or win. Wait, is this even real video? You face the struggle. You face so many hardships, right? But you got back up. It is not just making money. It is about legacy. You're creating a physical imprint in this world. Like, is this real? Did she really like... Is she just on stage talking to nobody and then she superimposed the crowd in there? Because that didn't even seem like, look at the crowd. What What is this crowd? Like, who are, the, who are these guys cheering? Like, who are these people? What is happening here? So this is like a some sort of TED talk. Like, I, like is this at the same place? Underdog. Like, who are these guys? The underdog is the person 
was seen like I want to see that less likely to succeed or win. You faced the struggle. You faced so many hardships, right? You're creating a physical. You are going to break through. You are going to crush it, and you're going to live the life of your dreams. If I can, you can. No excuses. No excuses. You don't have to know how. You just have to say yes. Oh, oh, oh that's it. Like, who are these people? Who are those people? Guys, you don't have to know how. You just have to say yes. It's that fucking easy. This is a pyramid. This sounds like every pyramid scheme ever. It's an iconic moment for you to be right here right now. What the fuck was Ladies that? Ladies and gentlemen, show up on your feet. Welcome to the stage. Wait a minute. Like, what was that? Inspired me tonight. I feel like I don't want to be good at just one thing. I want to do a lot of different things. When she talked about the different streams of revenue. Yes, I'm so inspired. It's an inspiration for me. I feel like I'm constantly living in a loop. Like, these are what you call, if this is real, these are what you call suckers right here. What she taught me was that, like, that's completely normal and it's all part of your own path. Working with Pam was absolutely incredible. Um, you know, from point A to all the way to the um, actual event, she was great. Communication was awesome. She was so super excited. Anytime that we met, she was stoked, and that made me really, really excited. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> like, uh, like what the events? Like, what's on the events page? Let's see. Our mission, upcoming events. Ex what's the upcoming events? A six-day transformation in Tulum, Mexico. A self-repair and connection to higher self. So we can go to Tulum, Mexico. What? Wait, was she even there? What is happening? The pod. Let's see the podcast. What is this? Listen to in 77 countries, top 1.5%, because she says it will. Like what? I've never heard of her podcast. Who would? Like, so she talks to other scam, like whoever these people are, she talks to them. I don't know. The whole, the whole thing just reeks of it. Let me go back to the blog real quick and then we'll go on to the next topic because I do have more coming on this woman. She just sounds so freaking shady. But uh, quick, um, let me just do a turtle chat real quick. I got a couple turtle chats here I want to bring up. Uh, turtle Cadet, thank you very much, Turtle Cadet. He says, uh, in a rant... Uh, I'm a rant, playing a rant, disguised as another rant. He says, 100 bucks. Thank you very much, Toto Kodai. We appreciate that. You're the man, brother. Thank you very much. Saw you in the chat yesterday, too. Thank you, sir, as always. Uh, DW sends 25 big ones. It says, another honoranium, this time to Troll Homeo on Twitter, who is so obsessed with hating Turtle Boy that he or she likely spends more time watching and reading Turtle Boy than most of his fans do. Thanks to Troll Homeo. You suck, you no life loser. Yeah, again, I Troll Homeo is like my favorite person ever. Um, I'm pretty I think we all know Troll Homeo is Shannon um Liberi at this point. It's pretty obvious. Like nobody else could possibly dedicate the man hours to me and is crazy enough to do that than Shannon Liberi, like obviously. But uh if you check out the Troll Homeo account, man, like this account just is fucking insane. Like obsesses over everything I do watches everything her and uh, Michelle Olson who runs the lounge lizard account. I've never seen such dedicated trolls who make absolutely no progress in stopping me, but just never stop. I, I got to give it to them. They they're so crazy that they never stop. And I just want to thank them because I hope they never do because we get donos like that. Cause of you, we've gotten them before you saw that before. So thank you. Please, like your trolling and your like insane infatuation with me uh, in stopping inspires people to donate. 
it inspires people to donate. So again, we couldn't do that without is she oh she's pretending to be a dude now. I mean, it's just so obvious that it's her. It was funny because somebody accused that account of being her. There's a fake Shannon LeBerry account now, and it accused that troll homeo of being Shannon. And then the real Shannon shows up in that same thread somehow, even though the real Shannon wasn't tagged or anything like that. The real Shannon shows up and it's like, that's not me. It's like, well, how'd you get alerted to this back and forth? You just, what? Sure thing, Shannon. She's not good. Like, she's like, well, what are you saying? That I have more than one account? No. Oh yeah, because you're not that, that's above you somehow, right? Oh yeah, right. You're not crazy enough to do this. Sure thing, Shannon. So and if anyone else wants to donate again, uh, uh the uh link is at the top there called Turtle Chat. Donate whatever amount of money you want. It's graciously appreciated. You get to write a message and I'll read it for the big screen. Uh we got a cash app too. My cash app is dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. We just got a cash app from Seven Pounder. He sent um he sends uh sent one five dollar one that says for Ian on Tim show is a douche. I, I liked Ian. I disagree with that one, but thank you for the dono. Then he sends a twelve dollar one. He says for I'm so stoned. Here's twelve bucks for making me laugh. Okay, all right. Thank you, seven pounder. Thank you. Appreciate that, sir. All right. Um. So let me. Uh. Yeah, she's an am dump truck. Yeah. Why well, am I not calling her dump truck? That's her name. Dump truck. Just a loser, man. Loser. Uh, again, Sam, she, she goes, this is her premiere for her commercial for her podcast. It had under a hundred views, but it's we in the top in world of instant gratification, a world Look where at social media creates disillusioned realities. What does it mean to rise up against all odds and come up to be the underdog succeed and defy all odds <coughs> I'm here to show you the real stories, the real struggle and the real progress stories that show how failures became lessons and how fear was conquered. Welcome to underdogs. I've been an underdog my entire life. My family and I came to the United States when I was five years old. My dad worked three jobs just to pay the bills. And my mom stayed at home with my young brother and I. I watched them hustle my entire life, buying businesses, buying the real estate, and coming up. As I grew older, I knew that it was my destiny to be an entrepreneur, to step into the industries that are the toughest <laughs> real estate development, construction, and commercial real estate. I wanted to defy odds. This show is part of me, part of my idea. Part of my, like, who's listening to this? Like she's in the, t she has more downloads than me. Okay. Sure thing. And meanwhile, she's going on shows with like 13 where there's uh, still some overflow. She'll go on with anyone, any, any time somebody so, puts a camera in her face, that's me. <laughs> she will go on there and just talk about herself. I was exposed to hustle. Right. Like that's what, that, <laughs> that's okay. That's not that. Like you said, you could put a property on the market. Okay. Okay. What's this one? Hello, everyone. On the business front. His okay. So, I mean, it's just nonstop like that. And again, crap. Oh, by the way, this book launch was at her parents' pizza shop in West Roxbury. That's where she did it from. I mean, who, there's no way people are paying this woman, right? Like, I want to look more to her. Bottom line is, I'm going to do a deep dive. I'm going to have more coming on her. Uh, she had no answer for me when I asked, like, why don't you like, do you have any pictures of you and Anna together? She had nothing. I'm like, well, like what the fuck? Grin you know? community is ready to welcome all she's three children. We cannot. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll have more on that coming, uh, in the next week or so. So stay tuned with that. Oh, should I call her? Let's just fucking call her. I got, I mean, I got a direct line to her cause she's already accepted my DMS. So let's give her a call. Let's do it right now. All right, let's look her up. Pamela Barty. Okay. Did she block me yet? Okay. No, she hasn't. Let's call her. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'll change the audio. Hello? Pamela? She didn't answer. She didn't answer. Let me try one more time. One more time. 
One more second. Okay, she's not answering. I think it's on purpose. I get, I'm getting hung up on like the first ring now. So I definitely think uh, we're not friends anymore. I think she might have seen the blog. I don't know. I'm going to ask if I can come on her top 145. I mean, I'm not as big as you, but... Um, oh, she blocked me. She has blocked me. I've, I've now been blocked. So she knows. She she saw the blog. She knows what's up. So I've been blocked uh, by, by, by the girl boss, top 1.5%. So that's relationships over now. Um, <laughs> so we're just out. Like, so that's not shady at all. Uh, the, so the woman who can't stop talking about herself and going on every show possible to, to market herself, it, they avoid the person that I, you know, you know, this is the difference between me and the mainstream media. CBS and all these other companies are just out like, so you, you're say you're, 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 you're her best friend. Well, I'm sold. You have a nice pantsuit. Tell us everything. Here's unlimited attention. Here you go. And then I'm like actual media who does actual journalism. And I say, well, do you have like a picture or some way to, cause I don't know you. Do you have like any evidence that you're friends with her? Blocked. <laughs> it's like she doesn't want to come on. It's like, dude, that right there is the difference between Turtle Boy and real media. What you just saw right there. Okay. So um, thank you very much. Just got a, a, a $10 dono on the Cash App from Caroline Ford. Says $10 to throw into the fuck you trolls fund. So thank you, Troll Homeo. You're the girl. You're the man. Whatever you are, Shannon, whatever you're going by these days, whatever gender you want to be called. So thank you, Troll Homeo. Got another one here from Tony. Let me bring it up. Uh, it's from Tony it says, I watch to hate on Kate. When is the next crusty panties coverage? Okay. So I'm sorry, Tony. I appreciate the donos, but I mean, I'm done with her. It's like, I've, I'll, I'll cover her court proceedings. Um, because obviously she's a piece of shit, but she's also a nobody in the grand scheme of things. Like nobody knows. I think that was proven kind of last night when all these people are like, check out Kate Peters channel and there's crickets. Nobody knows who that is. Nobody cares who you are. You don't even stream anymore. You don't do anything like she tapped out after the Andrew Johnson expose after I exposed what a piece of shit this woman is and what a piece of shit her boyfriend is and what they do in front of the poor abused children that they continue to hurt to this day. Uh, she knew that, that that was the most, that was the knockout punch. There was, she wanted no more part of turtle boy after that. She hasn't said a fucking word about it. And that's exactly how I want it. Go play with your chili cheese fries. Okay. Go play with him. Go find a fucking auditor of the week to do an expose on and pretend you're better than them. Go ahead. Cause you ain't. Now, to the auditors of the world, the people that hate her or whatever, it's like, if you're smart, just use my content. Like, people like Chili are not smart. Like, if Chili was smart, like, I remember sending him some of that stuff when he asked. And he'd be like, oh, my God, this is crazy. I'm like, have you not done your research, dude? This woman's dedicating her life to fucking going at you. And you can't even fucking Google her? Like, dude, it's all right on the fucking website, dude. Like, you have all this information to use. Why don't you use it? <laughs> and so he's like, I'm suing her. Okay, chill. Well, go ahead. But anyway, so I'm not, like, I have no interest in her. I'm, I'm going to cover the criminal proceedings because she's being charged with a crime. Um, other than that, I have no interest in her. I don't care about this fucking YouTube beef. That means nothing to me. Uh, I'm interested in the criminal shit. Uh, and also, I did get an update. I spoke with Detective Grant from the Boston Police Department in Jamaica Plain. And uh, last Thursday, he filed a criminal complaint in uh, West Roxbury Courthouse. So against Andrew uh, Johnson. So how that works now is they will set up a magistrate's hearing for probable cause for him to be charged with assault and battery. And uh, for assaulting me outside of the courthouse, a well-respected uh, award-winning journalist uh, I was assaulted. Uh, it's an assault on the first amendment. What he did, it was all caught on camera and yeah. So, um, it's, uh, we'll see what happens with that. So how that works now as a magistrate, will decide if there's probable cause, which most likely they will. And then he will be charged with a crime.
and he's already on probation. So hopefully he'll go to jail over that because he is an actual violent piece of shit. And it will be a pleasure doing that. It will be a pleasure doing that. Oh, lucky you. Aren't you lucky, especially this time of year? Okay, so thank you very much for the dono. I appreciate that. If anyone else, again, wants to donate, the link is at the top for the turtle chat, or you can cash out dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy, and I'll read those periodically. Okay, let's move on to the last story here that I wanted to get to. Love your hat. Oh, yeah, that's right. My DeSantis 2024 out. Trump came to New Hampshire today. Did you see that? I call him low energy Trump now. Low energy Trump came to New Hampshire trying to like build the ground for the primary. On the same day, a poll came out in New Hampshire showing DeSantis, who has not announced he's running for president yet, with 44 to 30% of a lead over Donald Trump. He hasn't even announced he's running. He's got 44%. <laughs> people of Republicans in New Hampshire say they're voting for DeSantis. That's not good, Donnie. That's not good. Uh, so I'm not even worried about Donald Trump. I mean, Ron DeSantis is going to get the nomination in 2024 and he's going to be president. It's inevitable. Ron DeSantis is going to be the 47th president. I have no doubt in my mind. And it is going to be glorious. He's going to go down in history as like, uh, you'll see. You, we you have if if you haven't seen him yet you'll see like he's extreme there's a reason he won with 60 percent because he's dynamic he's like a once in a generation politician and you're very lucky to have him you're very lucky to have him in florida but you have to share okay you have it's unfair a lot of them are like we want him down here in florida it's like don't get greedy you got the nice weather okay share some of that DeSantis with the rest of us all right Share some of that. So thank you. Okay. Let's go on to the last story here. Um, the Julia Mejia attorney thing. Let's see. This scumbag. What's this question here? I'm trying to read the comments. Did you see LG Holly Hobby? What's that photos? I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know what that means. Okay, let's talk about this one. All right. So uh, as you all know, I'm being sued by by Julia Mejia. Uh, the link to support the GoFundMe for the Legal Defense Fund. Uh, Mark Rendaza is representing me in that. Uh, you can click on that right here. Um, so that'd be cool if you want to do that. Uh, but she's being represented by this guy, Anthony Ellison. Now, normally I, some people would say, don't go after the lawyers and I don't go after them, but I'm going to investigate you. That's what I do. Cause to me, there are ethical lawyers and they're unethical lawyers An ethical lawyer. And I've dealt with ethical lawyers before. I, I know one lawyer, Andrew Kutcher. Um, I've hired him for a number of things before he represented me in a restraining order thing with actually Jinduso up in New Hampshire. She tried to get one on me. And, uh, he, he told me that people have come to him cause he's like a right wing lawyer. He does a lot of second amendment shit. And a lot of right wingers came to him with COVID stuff about like man mask mandates. A lot of people came to him with mask mandates. Can we sue the school district over this? Blah, blah, blah. And he turned them down because he said it's going to lose basically like the courts have ruled a bit. It's not like I could take your money. You could pay me, but we're going to lose. So it's unethical for me to give you hope and just take this case that is almost no shot of winning just so I can, you know, make more money. Like that's unethical. So this guy to me, like the Julia Mejia lawsuit is the dumbest lawsuit I've ever seen. Just go back and watch some of the streams we've done on it. I'm being sued by a Boston city councilor because I reported that she made her Twitter account private. That's it. That, that's what, and, and why did she make her Twitter account private? Cause I asked her about an alleged DUI that she allegedly covered up. Keep me updated on the Celts, please. If we, if we lose four in a row, man, Jesus Christ, that's not good. So there he is. Anthony Ellison. He's the brother of, of Minnesota Attorney General and former Congressman Keith Ellison, who uh, was accused of beating the shit out of his ex-girlfriend when he ran for office and won anyway. Um, he's representing her in this case. 
but he's got a long history of scummery too. So it kind of brought some of it up here. Like for instance, he was involved in a lawsuit. He filed a lawsuit on behalf of his client, Felix Arroyo. Felix Arroyo is the brother of sticky fingers, Ricardo Arroyo, who was credibly accused by multiple women of sexual assault. And he's the son of uh, taxpayer leech Felix Arroyo Sr., former register of probate in Suffolk County. And he uh, Felix Arroyo ran for mayor of Boston in 2013. He lost in the primary. He endorsed Marty Walsh. As a result, Marty Walsh gave him a hookup job in his administration, but then he fired him four years later because a woman accused him of sexual harassment. That led to a lawsuit against the city in which Ellison is the attorney representing him, which is ongoing. When the firefighter husband, so the woman he allegedly sexually harassed came after, uh, the woman he allegedly sexually harassed, the husband confronts him in public, you know, like men do, like you fucking touching my wife and shit. Like what the fuck dude, you know? And this motherfucker ran to the cops and tried to file a criminal complaint on him. So this is the scumbags that we're dealing with here. And he also represented Ricky Arroyo, Sticky Arroyo, when he was credibly accused a few months ago of sexual assault on multiple women. So all of these people run together. Um, he also represented, now this is hilarious, he represented Calvina Struthers, who was the mother of Michaela Miller, who was charged with abusing Michaela Miller and was the reason Michaela Miller was in foster care and attempted to profit off of the suicide of her daughter and then falsely accused five white girls, or five white teenagers, of lynching her. It was completely made up. And by the time we had, she had her own lawyer already, but by the time that we wrote about it and exposed her for being a fraud, he became her lawyer after that. So that's the kind of scumbag this guy likes to get mixed up with, is left-wing, radical Marxist grifters and scumbags like Julie Mejia. But for a guy who's like an attorney, it's like, why are you... Why have you been charged with driving with a suspended license? Why did you default on a civil judgment after being sued by NSTAR for almost $12,000? Why didn't you pay your NSTAR bill? Hmm. Why were you charged with OUI in 2012? Why were you charged with strangulation, violation of an abuse prevention order, and assault and battery on a family member, your ex-wife? Huh? Oh, yeah. And why were you represented by Ricky Arroyo in that case. Because I got the documents. These motherfuckers act like I'm not like fucking, act, like I don't have access to everything. I got them all. Again, Anthony Ellison, you don't have to poke the turtle, dude. But you do, like I didn't, I would have no fucking clue who you were and I don't care. But now you choose to take this case, which clearly she's not paying you for. Let's be honest. There's no fucking way she's paying you. This is some favor because all you assholes run in the same social circles. And she came to you. She's like, oh, my God, this white boy in Holden, he'd be talking mad shit about me. Oh, my God, he'd be talking shit about my TikToks. We need to sue him because that's deformation. Oh, my God, Black Lives Matter. Oh, dear God. I'm the first Afro-Latina she her on the bus of city council. This is not woke. This is a white supremacy. Oh, dear God. Like, he, she, somebody comes to you with a lawsuit like that, you're like, sorry, can't help you. <laughs> it's like, that's what a real attorney would do. But this moron is like, we'll sue and we're going to win. No, you're not, dude. You're not going to win. It's, it's The only thing that's going to come out of this is how embarrassing is it going to be for you? Because I'm not going to lose this, obviously. It's not how the First Amendment works. I have free speech rights. Duh. You're a city councilor. You can't silence me for criticizing you and investigating you, obviously. Duh. And hopefully you get reprimanded by the court for even bringing this in front of them. Because this is like the definition of a frivolous lawsuit. So, uh, but again, I didn't know who you were. And that now I do. And I know that you were charged with strangling your wife, dude. And then she had an order on you that you were charged with violating. 
You had a GPS monitoring on you. Yeah. So, um, all these assholes kind of run together. We'll see what comes with that. This guy's a real piece of shit. I mean, look at the, the this is in the, the probate court docs. It was designed to harass her or intimidate her into not testifying against him. The wife suffered serious abuse at the hands of the husband. He has a history of violent and explosive behavior. He's a violent man engaged in extensive abusive behavior against the wife and their two daughters. Oh, okay. The wife currently has an order on him due to the abuse against her. He has struck their daughters. The husband is only to parent the minor child in public. He can't even bring his son to her house, to his house. So this motherfucker is shady as fuck. That's all I'm saying. And we got plenty more on that, where that's coming from. Again, Julie Mejia, it's going to be my pleasure, girl. I, I hate to I hate to expose the first Afro-Latina she, her. But you could have just ignored me like you usually do. But you want to poke the turtle? Let's dance, baby. Let's dance. Ask Monica how that turned out for her. Ask your girl Monica how that's going, huh? And we'll see. All right. Anybody have any questions? We'll do a little Ask Turtle Boy to end the night. Fire away. If you want to ask about the Tim Cast thing, I missed some of the questions before. Or anything you want to talk about, fire away. Donos again at the top. Those would come first if anybody wants to donate that way. There's no such thing as a child. Correct. If it does get the discovery, it should be fun. But I don't know if it's going to get that far. We'll see. I almost hope it does. Did we lose? Did the Celtics lose on some LeBron bullshit? Live court? I mean, I've given you all the court updates. Yeah. Not much. If there's an update, I'll let you know about it, you know? Oh, it's going to overtime. Cool. What channel is it on? Is it on TNT, TBS? Okay. All right. Um, let me read the rumbles. I don't want to miss anyone on rumble. Andy already did block me. Andy no did block me. Is West Virginia cool or what? Yeah. I mean, it's what I expect. I saw a very small corner of West Virginia. I didn't see like the mountains and shit. I was in the valley, you know, the Shenandoah Valley. Uh, shocking. Somebody's dead at Holyoke Mall. Oh, he fouled Braun, but no call. Okay, good. My mom's good. Thank you for asking. LeBron got a technical. That's odd. Why didn't you rip off the beanie? Because why would I? How much production did the Tim Pool uh, Tim Show have? Was it overproduced? Uh, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, he's, it's his show. You know, I'm not going to bad mouth or anything. It's his show. So, but he did. I mean, it's not the turtle boy show. You know, it is what it is. This is my, this is my chance to rant. I, sh I rant on here. I was a guest, you know, how did mom feel about the hat? Uh, she liked it. She was just proud of me. You know, she was proud of it. Uh, okay. So picks for tomorrow. Um, by the way, the chair was very comfy. I got to get one of those bossy. What are those bossy chairs? I don't even know what they're called. Boston. I want those. Uh, picks for tomorrow. I wanted to pick Bengals Niners because those are the teams I prefer. I like more. Um, uh, the Niners haven't won since I was a kid. Um, uh, they've made it a couple times since. They lost with Kaepernick. They lost with Jimmy G. Um, I would want them to win. Uh, I'd obviously want the Bengals to win because they have never won a Super Bowl. But I'm going to pick uh, who I think is going to make. I think it's going to be Bengals Eagles. Because if it was the Bengals Niners, I wouldn't, I'd feel bad if one of them had to lose. So I want like a villain in the Super Bowl. I don't like the Eagles and I don't like the Chiefs. So I hope one of the, like, if it's Niners Chiefs, I'm going to go Niners. If it's Bengals Eagles, I'm going to go Bengals. Um, but I think what I think is going to happen, I think it's going to be Bengals Eagles. And I think the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl. That's what I think is going to happen. If I was a betting man. 
And if the Bengals win at Kansas City, they will be a favorite in the Super Bowl over whoever they play. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Thirteen Kings. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Two thousand twenty-three. I'm going to keep saying it, baby. Year of the turtle. We're doing big things this year. Big things. We're off to a great start in January. I'll tell you that much. Big, big, big things. But, all right, I want to go watch the rest of the Celtics, so it doesn't look like many questions are here. Uh, I guess we'll call it a night, guys. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for the donos. appreciate those, everyone who donated, and just supporting me, man. It was so cool yesterday to be on that program. And they were saying, before the show started, they were like, look at all these turtle emojis. <laughs> like, they were blown away. They were impressed by that. So that really was cool that you guys did that. And showed up and just showed, like, look at this guy brings a crowd with him. This guy's already established. That really helped a lot. So uh, it built it built the intrigue. And so we're going to keep it going, baby. We're going to keep this revolution going. So thank you, everybody, for joining me. And we will see you guys all for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live on Tuesday night. Peace, Turtle Riders. <laughs>